Good morning. We'd like to welcome everybody out this Resurrection Sunday. As far as announcements are concerned, the Easter lilies in the sanctuary this morning are in memory of Eugene and Betty Cheney, Myra Finney, Jill Fortner, Earl and Helen Walling, Brenda Hardy, H.T. and Doris Hardy, Jim and Margaret Hatton, Tommy Spiegel, and Melvin Williams. Are there any other announcements this morning? If not, for our opening hymn, we'll be singing page 416, Christ Arose. We'll stand and sing the first, second, and the third verse. And following that third verse, I'll ask Chris Harris if he'll lead us in a word of prayer. Would everyone please stand? As we go into our prayer time this morning, we want to remember all those that are on our prayer list. In addition, these were mentioned this morning. Zayda Price, Ricky Price, Bobby Willis, Jeremy Miller, Danny Curtis, Bobby Brandenburg, Michael Woolery, Mandy Clevenger, Bill Ball, Al Howard, and the families that have lost loved ones this week, the John David Sippel family and the Roy Bunch family. Are there any others that you'd like to add or take off this morning? Okay. 
Clyde Bagley family. Crystal Collett family. Crystal Collett family. Mike. Billy Hacker family. Okay. Florence Barnes family. Billy Hacker family. And say that last one again. Florence Barnes family. Florence Barnes family. Jim Hamilton. Also Gladys Hunter. Gladys, what was the last name? Hunter. Hunter. If there are no others, we'll be singing page 428 in the garden. We'll sing the first, standing on the third verse, and Brother Joe will bring our morning prayer. pray. Heavenly Father God, we come before you, Lord, and we just honor you and worship you and thank you for blessing us with one blessing after another. 
Most of all, we thank you for Christ Jesus, for his life, his death, his burial, his resurrection, and that we are blessed to be here in freedom to serve you, Father, to praise the one true risen Lord. Father, as we come before you, we petition you on behalf of the many who are on this prayer list, and we pray for their healing. We pray that you will comfort the grieving, to encourage the, that you encourage the depressed. I pray that those that are in the hospitals and nursing homes and different facilities, I pray that you strengthen their bodies so that they can return to their normal walks of life. Those who are about to undergo surgery, Father, and different procedures, I pray that you guide the hands of the doctors and nurses and medical staff as they tend to them. Again, Father, we just love you so much. Thank you for this Resurrection Sunday, and it's in Jesus' name I pray, and amen. As we go into our communion time this morning, we'll be singing page 189, Must Jesus Bear the Cross Alone? We'll sing the first standing on the fourth verse, and the men will come forward and pray for our communion. Everyone, please be seated. Well, just a couple days ago, it was Good Friday. We had a Good Friday luncheon here at Rice Station, and we got to talk about some of the terrible torture that Jesus Christ went through for our sins. And we come to this time in service where we are to remember the terrible torture that Jesus went through for our sins, for the sins of all mankind. And we need to realize that Jesus went to the cross of Calvary out of love. The Bible tells us in Romans chapter 5 and verse 8, but God demonstrated His own love for us in this, while we're still yet sinners, Christ died for us. And Jesus said... That when we take of the bread and we take of the juice, that we are to do this in remembrance of Him. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, the Apostle Paul reminds us that we need to do this in remembrance of Jesus. He says, For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus in the night which He was betrayed took bread. And when He had given thanks, He broke it and said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. I want to remind us that Jesus is... The perfect sinless Savior. We're the ones that sinned. Jesus has no sin and no deceits found in his mouth. 
Judas betrayed Jesus. Peter denied Jesus. Thomas doubted Jesus. But Jesus died for them. Pilate rejected Jesus. Herod taunted Jesus. Caiaphas framed Jesus. But Jesus died for them. The soldiers crucified Jesus. The disciples deserted Jesus. The people laughed at Jesus. But Jesus died for them. Mary wept for Jesus. The woman anointed Jesus. Joseph of Arimathea buried Jesus. But Jesus died for them. Throughout the years, so many people have doubted Jesus. People have denied Jesus, people have rejected Jesus, but here's the deal. Jesus died for us all. Let's honor his sacrifice for humanity today by doing as he's told us to do. Let's take this meal in remembrance of him and remember his great sacrifice. Remember his great love. Remember the cross, but also remember that the cross wasn't the end for Jesus. He just completed his task all the way to the end to when he said, it is finished. That was a victory chant, you know it? That wasn't a, oh, I give up. No, that was a victory chant. It is finished. He completed his task. He was buried on the third day. He arose. So let's remember our Lord this day. Brother Marvin. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you. For each one that's here this morning meeting around your table to remember the death, burial, and resurrection of your Son, our Savior. Dear Heavenly Father, if it wasn't for the resurrection, dear Heavenly Father, if it wasn't for the resurrection, we'd be a miserable people. But now we're a people of hope. And I pray, dear Heavenly Father, as we're about to take of the bread that represents the precious body of your Son, our Savior, that will do so in a way that will please you and strengthen us. Lord, we just thank you for this day and thank you for the blood. And without the shedding of blood, we can have no remission of sins. And we know that Jesus died there on that cross for our sins and help us to always remember that. Remember the type of death that he died for us, all the pain that he went through. <coughs> But we also remember that he was resurrected on that third day and that we serve a risen Savior. Just help us to always endure and help us to remain faithful and true. All these things we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Following special music by the choir and the morning message, our invitation hymn will be page 460, Room at the Cross for You. (coughs) 
To prepare a musical on resurrection is such an honor, but how can anyone adequately portray the power of the resurrection? How can the glory of a redeemed life be described in a small performance? How can our choir capture the beauty of Christ for others to see when we ourselves cannot begin to grasp the magnitude of it? Our prayer for this short resurrection musical is that it will touch your hearts and ours and to help focus on the beautiful plan of redemption and on what Christ's resurrection means to all of us. God's blessings and happy resurrection to everyone. We will now present our musical alone.
Give the choir a hand. <laughs> Good morning. I do want to welcome everyone out to this Resurrection Sunday. It's always a privilege and an honor to be in the Lord's house, uh, especially on the Lord's Day, on the first day of the week. And it's always an honor to be in the Lord's house on Resurrection Sunday. If you're visiting with us, we want to welcome you and encourage you to come back to the Rice Station Christian Church and worship and praise God with us at every chance that you can. And we also want to welcome those that are worshiping with us online. There was a lady who was on her way to church service on Resurrection Sunday morning. She was excited for the worship service. She was excited to celebrate the risen Lord. But she got about a quarter way toward the church and her vehicle broke down. Not wanting to miss the church service, she just pulls the car when it was breaking down onto the shoulder of the road and she calls an Uber to come and get her. Well, the Uber driver comes, and he picks her up, and they're heading down the road, and they was all silent for a few minutes. And the lady says, Sir? And she was just going to ask him a question, and he didn't respond. So after a couple more seconds of silence, she leaned forward and tapped on his shoulder and said, Sir? And when she did, he let out this big, giant squall, and he jerked the wheel and went toward oncoming traffic and then he jerked back and he slammed on his brakes and he skid to the, the side of the road and stopped there and was taking deep breaths and the lady in the back seat of the Uber, well she was taking deep breaths as well and she said, sir I, I am so sorry that me touching your shoulder and talking to you scared you so bad. He goes, no, 
You, you just, you don't understand. It's not your fault. You see, I've drove a hearse for the last 25 years. <laughs> now, I, I say that just joking, but that guy thought a resurrection occurred in the back of the hearse. But today, I do want to talk to you about a real resurrection that really did occur if you would turn with me in your Bibles or in your Bible apps to Matthew chapter 28. Matthew chapter 28, and we're going to read verses 1 through 7 just to kind of remember what we're here to celebrate today. Matthew 28, 1 through 7 says, Now after the Sabbath, as it was beginning to dawn toward the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary came to look at the grave. And behold, a severe earthquake had occurred, for an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled away the stone and sat upon it. And his appearance was like lightning, and his clothing as white as snow. The guards shook for fear of him and became like dead men. The angels said to the woman, to the women, do not be afraid, for I know that you're looking for Jesus who's been crucified. He is not here, for he has risen just as he said. You know in that moment right there, their minds had to go back to all the times when Jesus said, tear down this temple, tear down this body, and I will build it up again in three days. Verse 6, He is not here, for He has risen just as He said. Come and see the place where He was laying. Go quickly and tell His disciples that He has risen from the dead. And behold, He's going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see Him. Behold, I have told you. This resurrection of Jesus is what we are here to celebrate today. But an interesting question came to my mind this week. What if Christ had not risen? What if Jesus Christ had not risen? What would that mean for us? I tell you that today because as you can see on the screen, the title of our message is, If Christ Had Not Risen. Go ahead and turn over to the great resurrection chapter of 1 Corinthians chapter 15. This is where our primary text will be throughout uh, the remainder of of our message. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, and let's read verses 12 through 19. There the Apostle Paul says, Now if Christ is preached that He has been raised from the dead, how do some among you say that there's no resurrection of the dead? But if there's no resurrection of the dead, not even Christ has been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, then our preaching is vain. Your faith is also, also is vain. Moreover, we are even found to be false witnesses of God, because we testified against God that He raised Christ, whom He did not raise, if in fact the dead are not raised. For if the dead are not raised... Not even Christ has been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, your faith is worthless. You're still in your sins. Then those also who have fallen asleep in Christ have perished. If we have hoped in Christ in this life only, we are of all men most to be pitied. If Christ had not risen, now I know that text can sound kind of confusing, but I want to point out some important principles that we see here. You see, if Christ had not risen, then our preaching would be useless. That's the first thing I want us to notice. If Christ had not risen, our preaching would be useless. You see, the preaching of the Bible is God's chosen method to deliver His Word to the world. We can see that numerous and different times we're told that in the Bible. Now, how long would you say it would take a preacher to write a sermon? I'm talking about from beginning to end. What's the average amount of time that it takes a preacher to write a sermon? 
Well, it takes a preacher on average 11 and a half hours. That's starting with prayer, that's doing your Bible study, that's doing your deep research, that's pinning it out and going over your material. The average is 11 and a half hours. Some spend a little more time, some spend a little less time, but that is the average. About 11 and a half hours per sermon. Now, for those of us who uh, are preachers by vocation, well, we dedicate our entire lives to preaching the gospel message of Jesus Christ. Some preachers, well, sometimes we have to travel to preach. Sometimes we have to relocate to preach. And some preachers go and become missionaries and preach on foreign soil, in third world countries even. Yet here's the deal. All that would be useless if Christ had not risen. All of our preaching would be useless if Jesus didn't rise from the grave. And here's the deal, folks. This is very important. Every Christian is a preacher. You may not be the preacher that stands in the pulpit or behind the pulpit or like me walks around the pulpit every week. But here's the deal. If you're a Christian, you are a preacher you see, when Jesus gave the Great Commission, when he said, therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I've commanded you, and surely I'm with you always to the very end of the age. When Jesus said that, he wasn't just talking to the apostles. He wasn't just talking to the pulpit minister. He was talking to all of us Christians where to take the word to the world. So even if you're not, <coughs> even if you're not the preacher who stands at the pulpit and delivers the sermon, your life should still be a sermon everywhere you go. The way you walk, the way you talk, the way you live, that should be a sermon. But our text tells us in 1 Corinthians 15, 14, we're told if Christ has not been raised, then our preaching is useless. And you know what that would, all that entails? That, that would mean that every person that we ever witness to about Christ would be vain. That would mean that all the Bible study that we Christians have put in so that we can be prepared to talk to people about Jesus, it would all be of no Value All the times that you invited people to church to hear the gospel message, it would be for nothing. You see, the resurrection is vital. It makes our preaching, it makes our witnessing, it makes them valuable. So we should say, praise God that Jesus Christ did die on the cross for us and that he did resurrect back to life because he makes our preaching, our witnessing, our teaching valuable. He gives us value. Also, because he died and he rose again, well, if he had not, excuse me, if he had not died and rose again, then our faith would be useless. Our faith would be useless. Why are we here? I have to be careful when I ask that question, okay? Because a couple years ago, I asked that question during a communion meditation. My daughter Gracie said, Cause God! Cause God, I have to be careful and look around and see if Gracie's up here with us when I ask that. But why are we here today in this building assembled together? We're here today because we want to worship the Lord whom we have complete and total faith in, right? Yet in 1 Corinthians 15 and verse 14, again, we're told that if Christ had not been raised, if he had not risen, then our faith would be useless. And if our faith would be useless, then we'd have no reason to be assembled here today. We would have no reason to meet together on every first day of the week to partake of the Lord's Supper. We'd have no reason to serve in the church. You see, our faith in Christ Jesus, the risen Savior gives us purpose and motivation to keep on keeping on until we make it to heaven. Our faith gives us purpose and motivation. We see a great example of that in the Apostle Paul. The Apostle Paul, after he was baptized by a Christian named Ananias in Damascus, 
The Apostle Paul, well, he went on three different missionary journeys, a fourth journey to Rome, and he endured so much for the cause of Christ. As a matter of fact, the Lord told Ananias before he went to baptize Saul of Tarshish, who would become the Apostle Paul, he said, I'm going to show him how much he must suffer for my name's sake. In 2 Corinthians 11, 24 through 28, look at what Paul tells us that he went through. 2 Corinthians 11, 24 through 28, Paul says, Five times I received from the Jews 39 lashes. Three times I was beaten with rods. Once I was stoned, or he was pelleted with stones. Three times I was shipwrecked. A night and a day I've spent in the deep. I have been on frequent journeys in danger of rivers, dangers of robbers, danger of my countrymen, danger from Gentiles, danger in the city, danger in the wilderness, danger on the sea, danger among false brethren. I've been uh, uh, in labor and hardship through many sleepless nights and hunger and thirst, often without food and cold and exposure. Apart from such external things, there is the daily pressure on me of concern for all the churches. Stop right there. He endured a lot, the Apostle Paul did. I mean, did you see that list? So what motivated Paul to keep on going through all that? It was his faith in Christ Jesus. It was his faith in the risen Lord. You see, Paul <clears throat> did <clears throat> as he encourages us to do. He lived by faith and not by sight. But if Christ had not been risen, if he had not raised from the dead, if he had not arose, then guess what? Everything that the Apostle Paul did was for nothing. Those three missionary journeys, that fourth trip to Rome, all those beatings they took would be for nothing. If Christ had not risen, then everything all the apostles ever did was for nothing. Everything every Christian has done to further the kingdom for the last 2,000 years would be for nothing. So we need to be people who praise the Lord every day for His great sacrifice on the cross of Calvary and for His victorious resurrection, which gives us faith, gives us purpose, gives us motivation. Because Christ has died and risen again, and He lives forevermore. But also, if Christ had not risen, the third thing I want to point out is this, we would all be lost. All of us who are Christians, if Christ had not risen from the grave, if He just died on the cross, we would all be lost. Look back in 1 Corinthians 15 with me, that great resurrection chapter. Verses 17 through 18. And it says, And if Christ had not been raised, your faith is worthless, you are still in your sins. Then those also who have fallen asleep or died in Christ have perished. Without Christ's death and resurrection, we and every Christian who ever lived would still be lost. But someone might ask, well, why was the death of Christ on the cross and the resurrection necessary? Well, the Bible lets us know that blood had to be shed. Hebrews 9 and verse 22 says, Without the shedding of blood, there's no forgiveness of sin. But Hebrews also lets us know that not just any blood would do. It had to be the blood of of the Lamb of God, the blood of the sinless Savior. It took the blood of Jesus for our sins to be washed away. So that's why Jesus had to die on the cross. But also, His resurrection was necessary and is necessary. You see, the resurrection of Jesus is necessary because it fulfills prophecy. Jesus' death was necessary because it fulfilled prophecy. Jesus' resurrection was necessary because it shows the Lord's power over death, hell, Satan, and the grave. And the resurrection of Jesus is 
necessary because it's a part of our salvation. The resurrection is a part of our salvation. We see that in baptism. Okay, the baptism, when you're baptized into Christ, and you must be baptized to have your sins washed away, <clears throat> baptism represents the death of Christ, His burial in the tomb, and His resurrection. It also represents our death to the old man of sin, our burial of that old man, and we raise to a new life. Romans 6 and verse 4 says it this way, Therefore we have been buried with Him through baptism in the death, so that as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, so we too might walk in newness of life. So if Christ had not risen, if Christ had not raised from the dead, then our preaching would be useless, our faith would be useless, we would all be lost. Now we see how horrible it would be then if Christ had not risen. So now I want us to be reminded of this. And this is very important. okay? Because like I said, the resurrection is what we're here to celebrate. And so far I've given, given you all this negative about, well, if it didn't happen. And you know, it kind of sounds like something my kids would say. But, but what if? But, but, but what if? But let's look at the other side of this. And that's this. The resurrection is an established fact. The resurrection of Jesus is an established fact. Okay, and so I'm going to mention a few things that people say about the resurrection to try to disprove it. But first I want us to look at 1 Corinthians 15, 3 through 8. And it says this, For I delivered to you as a first importance, this is important, Paul says, what I also received, that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that He was buried, and that He was raised on the third day according to the Scriptures, and that He appeared to Cephas, that's another name for Simon Peter, then the twelve, and after that He appeared to more than 500 brethren at one time, most of whom remain until now, they were alive when the Apostle Paul was, but some have fallen asleep or died. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles, and last of all, as to one untimely born, he appeared to me also. So right here, Paul names five different resurrection appearances of Jesus, and at one time, appearing to more than 500 eyewitnesses. And these are all real-life encounters with the risen Lord. But for those who doubt the resurrection of Christ still, I want to give you some information about the resurrection outside of the Bible. Okay? Some people are like, well, you know, I know that's what the Bible says, but uh, you know, is there any other evidence? Well, there's a first century historian named Josephus who is a non-Christian, and he spoke in his writings about Jesus Christ and His resurrection. So there's your source outside the Bible if, if you doubt the Word of God, which I hope you don't, because it's the living, breathing Word. It's the only thing that can give you the truth of salvation. <clears throat> now, for those who say that Jesus was just sleeping from exhaustion from the cross, that's why He arose. It's called the swoon theory, and people actually believe that. They say, well, you know, Jesus was beaten so bad uh, he was just so exhausted from all the blood loss that he passed out on the cross. And so he had to rest for a few days before he could get back up. That doesn't make any sense. And here's why. Roman soldiers were professional killers. Professional killers. These people who would do the crucifixions, they knew the exact place to put the spike so that it could drive through and hit a nerve and not break any bones. Okay, and these are five to seven inch spikes. Okay, they, they were just professional killers. And then to make sure that Jesus was dead, they thrust a spear into his side. Why? To pierce his lungs and to pierce the sack that's around the heart. And the Bible says that blood and water flowed. That proved Jesus was dead. And so 
it makes no sense for people to believe in this swoon theory that Jesus was just exhausted because he did die. For those who say the disciples just lied and they faked his resurrection. Well, I was telling the kids in Sunday school this morning, the high school and college uh, age group, that, well, that doesn't make any sense because Roman soldiers were soldiers and these apostles are just a, just a ragtag group of men. Either, are they going to come to this tomb that's guarded by Roman soldiers and overthrow the guard and, and roll away the stone and break the seal and steal the body? And that's what people say. People say that, but that makes no sense. Okay? It doesn't that these apostles could come in here and, and overthrow these soldiers. And here's something else to deal with that. This proves that they didn't steal the body, okay? You see, the first eyewitnesses of the resurrection were women. And no, no offense to any of you ladies, but here's the deal. During that day and age when Jesus rose from the grave, a woman's word was not permissible in court. So here's the deal. If they did go and steal the body, okay, they wouldn't have women come as the first eyewitnesses of the resurrected Lord. But they were, okay? And they were the first to go and to announce that Jesus had risen. One more thing. The apostles were willing to die for their faith in the resurrected Lord. And almost all of them did. And the, almost all of them did. We don't know about the apostle John when he died. But here's the deal. Those apostles preached Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection to their dying breath because he did die and he did resurrect. So both his death and his resurrection, they're established facts, established by, by historians, established by the Word of God, established all throughout history. And here's the deal. We can also look at the Word of God and see how powerful and true it is. Jesus said that heaven and earth will pass away, but my word will never pass away. And guess what we still have to this day? Despite all people, try, all these people in the world trying to burn and do away with the word of God, we still have it. Because heaven and earth will pass away, but his word will never pass away. He did die on the cross. He did resurrect. The bottom line of our message today comes down to this. When Jesus arose, it changed everything. His resurrection makes our preaching powerful, makes our faith powerful, and provides us with forgiveness of sin and eternal life. Every leader of every faith system out here in this world, every leader is dead and their bones and dust is still in the grave, but not Jesus. Because Jesus arose. He appeared to more than 500 eyewitnesses. Forty days later, living, he ascended to the Father, and he's reigning at the right hand of the Father. And the Bible tells us that one glorious day he's coming back. You know, the Lord has a pretty good track record, doesn't he? You look at the Old Testament, and it says... You know, the Lord says, I'm going to, the Father says, I'm going to send Jesus. At just the right time, he did send Jesus. Jesus says, I'm going to go to the cross and I'm going to die a brutal death. It happened. Jesus said, on the third day, I'm going to resurrect. It happened. Jesus said, before he ascended to the Father, I'm going to come back again. A hundred percent track record is pretty great because when the Lord says it, you can take it to the bank. The question is, if he was to return today on Resurrection Sunday, would you be ready? Would you be ready to stand before the Lord and give an account for your life? Well, the only way to be ready is to have obeyed God's plan of salvation. I go over that every week here at Rice Station. God's plan of salvation is that you have to hear the word of God about Christ's life, death, burial, and resurrection. You have to believe it with all your heart. You have to repent of your sins. Some people don't know what repentance means. It just means to turn away from. You have to confess before man that you believe in Jesus. 
You have to be buried in New Testament Christian baptism. Like I said, you must be baptized. You must be born again of the water and the Spirit. And then you must live faithfully for the Lord all the way to the end. All the way to the end of your life. And then you can enter into that glory land of heaven. Thank God that Jesus laid his life down on the cross of Calvary. Thank God that he arose. Thank God that he, he provides us with salvation. But here's the deal. The Lord will not force his way into anyone's life. You know that? He did all the hard work for us, taking all the pain that our sins deserve. He did all that for us. But then he puts the ball in our court. He lets us know that we have to obey him. Not to obey Jesus Christ is to reject Jesus Christ. And Jesus said that if anyone denies me in this sinful and adulterous generation, then I will deny him before the Father in heaven. Wouldn't that be horrible on the day of judgment to have to hear away from me, evildoer? I don't want to hear that, do you? I want to hear, well done, good and faithful servant, enter into the joy of the Lord. It only happens if we come to Jesus, if we have Jesus. So the Lord gives it to you. If you're lost, he says it's your turn to make the decision. I've done the hard work. Will you obey him? If you strayed away, will you come back to him? He calls you. The Bible's the great book of invitations. And Jesus says, come to me. I'll give you the free gift of the water of life. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, God, we come before you, Lord, and we love you. We thank you, Father, for Christ's life, and that we have all his teachings in your holy word, the Bible. We thank you for Christ's death on the cross, Father. We didn't deserve that, but you loved us so much that you decided before the creation of the world that you would send him to save us because you knew we would sin. And Father, I thank you for his resurrection because I know, Father, that it makes our preaching, it makes our faith, it makes our salvation possible and it gives us hope, hope for that future in heaven. Guide us as we go into this invitation time, then afterwards we depart. And we pray this in Jesus' holy name and amen. Let's stand together, church. We're going to have our hymn of decision. And I want you to remember these words. There was a song that used to be sang at the first Christian church, Church of Christ, that I ever preached at. And here, here are the words it said. It said, Jesus is coming soon, morning or night or noon. Many will meet their doom and trumpets will sound. All the dead shall rise, righteous meet in the skies, going where no one dies. Heaven were bound. If Jesus were to return today, would you be heaven were bound? You can be if you have him in your life, if you've obeyed him. So come if you need to make a decision as we sing. interesting 
And this song says there's room at the cross for you. And I'll tell you this, there's room in heaven for everybody. Jesus said in John chapter 14, do not let your heart be troubled. You believe in the Father, believe also in me. In my Father's house, talking about heaven, are many mansions. If it were not so, he says, I would have told you. And Jesus says, I go to prepare a place for you. He went to the cross and prepared the way for us. And he said, if I go prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself that where I am you may be also. There's room in heaven for each and every one of us. That's, that's a sign you'll never see in heaven. You know that you go by these, these hotels and they have these signs of no vacancy. You won't see that in heaven. There's room for everybody. And he's calling to all the lost to come to him. And this could be, you never know, life short, like a mist, the Bible says, like a vapor, appears for a short time and vanishes away. This could be the last opportunity that you have. Because we never know when death's going to come to us. But I can tell you this, there is a great resurrection day coming. Just like Jesus rose from the grave, the day is coming when all will rise and meet Jesus in the air. Again, I ask you, if that was today, would you be ready? Would you have made your reservations in heaven by obeying Jesus Christ, the one true Savior of the world? If you have a decision, don't put it off. Don't delay. Today's the day of salvation. So come as we sing. Thank you all for your attention this morning and happy Resurrection Sunday. Uh, if there are, are any visitors here with us, we want to encourage you to come back and, and worship God with us every chance you get. We're going to have service this evening at 6, and we're going to be talking about one of these resurrection appearances of Jesus and what happened at that resurrection appearance. So I encourage you to come out to that. And then, of course, we have our Wednesday night Bible study as well. I want to invite you uh, to that. We have a few events coming up. Uh, we'll announce those next week with 
uh, like our friend Sunday and things like that. Are there any other announcements that we need to specifically mention? If not, Greg Wright, you care to dismiss us with prayer?